Okay, so picking up from fertilization and implantation, we're now going to move into embryogenesis. Let's take a moment to think about what that word means. So genesis, as we've talked about before when we did spermatogenesis or oogenesis, genesis means creation, right? So embryogenesis is creation of the embryo. So the question becomes, what is an embryo? So I'm glad you asked. The embryo is what we call this ball of cells that was a blastocyst, and now it's going to turn into some new things, that inner cell mass is anyway, from the second through the eighth week of development. That means the second to the eighth week after fertilization. After that point, we're going to call it a fetus. So those first, you know, first couple of weeks, we have various names. It's a morula, it's a blastocyst, or at the very beginning, it's a zygote. And second through eighth week, we call it an embryo. And then from the eighth week of uh, after fertilization all the way until birth, we call it a fetus. So embryogenesis, the process of creating the embryo. So remind yourself, blastocyst, right? We have that outer shell of cells, which is the trophoblast, and then we have that inner cell mass, which is going to become our embryo. So what's going to happen with that inner cell mass is it's actually going to form, I'm going to circle it with this green here, a disc, a flat disc that's composed of three different layers, which you can see as blue, a kind of a pinkish color, and then the purple edge there. Let me give you a different view. This is what it looks like. This happens to be a pig embryo, but it's this kind of flat, slightly oblong disc. Uh, that's what we all started off looking like. And if I were to do a cross section of that and look inside that disc, I would see that there are three layers. The outer layer is this blue one. We're going to call that ectoderm. The middle layer is red, and that's called mesoderm, or sorry, the middle layer. And then the innermost layer is yellow, and that's called endoderm. So we have three different layers to this disc. Your book has images like this. I don't expect you to understand that or know these different parts. I just want you to know that we have a disc with three different layers, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. So those three different layers then are another differentiation. Our first differentiation was when we formed the blastocyst, and if you became part of the trophoblast, you were destined to be placenta and its accessory structures. If you were inner cell mass, you were destined to become part of the embryo. Now those inner cell mass cells have differentiated further into ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm, and depending on which camp you ended up in, that's going to dictate what you turn into. So the ectoderm cells are going to go on to form the skin and its glands, like sweat glands, our hair and our nails, also our nervous system. So you can see down here they're showing you the ectoderm is going to form the nervous system, so the brain, spinal cord, and all of our nerves. The mesoderm is going to form our muscles and our bones and parts of several of our organs. It's also going to form the blood and the blood vessels. And then the endoderm, the innermost layer, is going to form the inside linings of our guts, our organs, our viscera, our insides. And it's interesting because if you think about it and you take the nerves out of the equation in the brain and you just think, oh, ectoderm, that's the outer layer, that's your skin, that's right. And then mesoderm is the middle layer that's your muscle and bone, which is deep to your skin, right, going into the middle. And then your innermost layer is your guts, right, the endoderm. We're really just a tube within a tube within a tube. So... At the third week, which is the fifth week by menstrual, we're still a flat disc, but we start to form some noticeable structures here. So this is when the nervous system is beginning to form, so we're beginning to get a spinal cord. This structure up here is going to turn into the brain. We're also beginning to get a bit of a heart. 
think you can see it down there, but it's just a tube at this point. It doesn't have four chambers, it's just one big tube. So this is the next phase of embryogenesis. Then in the next week, we actually curve around. So that flat disc, actually the edges kind of curve around and form a tube. So we're pretty much, ectoderm is the outer tube, mesoderm is the inner tube, or the middle tube, ugh, endoderm is the inner tube. Oh, that's funny. Um, but as you can see here, the heart, this is the primitive heart right here. It hasn't gone inside the tube yet. It's still kind of stuck outside. So even as late along in development as the fourth week, yes, the heart is there, but it hasn't yet been incorporated into the inside of the body, which is kind of interesting. We're starting to form an umbilical cord, which is how the, the embryonic and fetal blood is going to actually go to and from the placenta. And we're starting to form limb buds. I think you can maybe see how there's a little thickening of tissue here, a little thickening of tissue here. Those are like little tiny flippers that are forming that are gonna eventually become the arms and legs. In the fifth week, we're pretty gorgeous. So the head gets really large. So the head gets really large. You start to form the optic vesicle, which is here. That's a pit, which is eventually going to form into an eyeball. It's not anything like an eyeball yet, but it's the beginnings of an eyeball, which is pretty exciting. And the nose is starting to form and the ears are starting to form. In the sixth week, oh, and before we move on, notice we still have quite a big tail at this stage in development and the heart is still outside the body as well. In the sixth week, which is eight weeks pregnant, we look kind of like a little gummy bear as you can see in the, in the picture down below. Or if you look at it from the side, we look more like this. The heart and the liver are now starting to move inside the body fingers and toes are starting to form on these little tiny limb buds and we're beginning to form the beginnings of a skeleton so you can kind of see here the beginnings of the backbone are forming at this point you're about two centimeters in length so a little less than an inch by the time we get to eight weeks or ten weeks pregnant all of the essential body parts have been started, right? We have the beginnings of the eyes and the ears and the liver and the intestines and the arms and the legs. And the tail has actually been resorbed, which is pretty cool. And now we have something that looks fairly humanoid, except it's still very translucent and see-through and the head is ginormous and the face looks rather alien-like. We're about one and a half inches in size at the end of the embryonic stage. So embryogenesis is weeks two through eight of development. And during this time, the early rough draft forms of all our major organs have been created. And that process is called, surprise, surprise, organogenesis. This whole process is something that is retained across many different species. So this process of forming an embryo is not unique to humans. You can find it in all different types of species. So I've shown you here a couple of different images of embryos of different species. Maybe take a moment, see if you can guess which ones are which, and then I'll show you. This is a chick, right? So that's gonna be a chicken. That one is a mouse. You can see it's keeping its tail. There's an elephant. You might be able to notice that it does seem to have a slightly more prominent nose than what we often have. And over here, well, that's a rat. It looks awfully humanoid, doesn't it? We look a lot the same. Again, kind of a longer snout than we have at that stage in development. And there's a human embryo at roughly the same stage of development as the others. So that's how we all start off.
I want to remind you of the placenta because it is now getting very well formed. So at this stage, at the end of embryogenesis, we now have an umbilical cord, right? And that was that goes in through your belly button, right? In through the umbilicus or belly button of the embryo. And it brings blood out to the placenta so that it can get oxygen and nutrition from the mom's bloodstream, which is over here, and so that waste products like carbon dioxide and other cellular wastes can also move across into mom's bloodstream. One of the things that's important to know is that the placenta is this interface between the two bloodstreams, but let's see if I can highlight it for you here. You see this kind of brown tissue here? That's a membrane. So there they are not in direct contact with each other. Things have to move across this membrane, and that membrane serves as a kind of a barrier so that some things like glucose and oxygen and carbon dioxide are allowed to cross the placenta from mom's bloodstream to the baby's and vice versa, but there are some other substances that are not able to cross the placenta. Long ago, doctors believed that nothing could cross the placenta, but as we'll talk about in our next lecture, there are some things that definitely can. So to, this is just a summary of what we talked about last time with those chorionic villi that contain the baby's blood vessels. And I also wanted to add that the placenta at this stage is now producing hormones in its own right. It's now making progesterone and estrogen, and they're going to work to help maintain the endometrium. So until now, the corpus luteum has been the only one doing that. But as the placenta develops and matures, it starts making progesterone and estrogen to maintain that endometrial lining to continue to nourish and support the pregnancy. So much so that in a few months, the corpus luteum is going to completely degenerate simply because it's not needed anymore. So here's some more uh, references for you about the placenta. And I just wanted to include this diagram because you can see nicely here the umbilical cord as it's going into the, into the embryo. I also want to highlight again that lots of substances, of course, can cross the placenta, but some cannot. So in summary, embryogenesis, the inner cell mass formed a flat disk that then differentiated into three layers, ectoderm, which became the skin and the nervous system, mesoderm, which became muscles and bones, our middle tube, and endoderm, which became the linings of our guts, our innermost tube, right? So that disc folds into that tube. We then do the process of organogenesis. We start off making all of our ma major organs get the rough drafts kind of penciled in. They're not yet fully functional. So it's a good thing that we're not gonna be born anytime soon. And the placenta at this point becomes pretty well developed. So it's not only serving as an interface between maternal and fetal bloodstreams to supply the fetus with the oxygen and nutrients it needs, but it's also taking waste products away. The placenta is also producing hormones to help maintain that endometrial lining. So by the end of the embryonic period, which is eight weeks after fertilization or 10 weeks pregnant, all of the major organs are established, at least in their starting forms, and we now are gonna call the embryo a fetus. It's about one and a half inches or three to four centimeters in length at this point. And so our next lecture, lecture 15, will pick up with fetal development.